Lil Durk just dropped his new album, Almost Healed. And I was just live on Twitch listening to this album together with y'all. If you haven't yet, make sure to follow me on Twitch. But now I want to give my first experience, my first thoughts and reaction after hearing this project for one time. So you got to keep that in mind. Of course, I'm going to go back to it. But this is my review, my first reaction. I don't want to call it a review because it's not like based on multiple listens of Almost Healed let's jump straight into this if you want to stay up to date with all current hip-hop events and releases make sure to subscribe and become part of this community oh and also go cop that fresh merch and listen to my new songs in the description real quick if you don't want to listen to this make sure to skip 10 seconds into the future but you can now sign up for my free newsletter with the first link in the description it comes out every sunday and details everything that's been happening in hip-hop over the past week so make sure to do that. So I made notes on in each individual track that was on this track list. 21 songs is quite a bit in total, but I want to go through them with y'all and I want to, you know, have y'all comment your thoughts on the album in the comments so that we can have a discussion about this and kind of discuss where Dirk is headed in the future. But let's start with the track list. So the first track on here is called Therapy Session and features Alicia Keys talking to Durkio. And this intro kind of goes into his personal trauma with the death of, for example, D Thank two years ago, Vaughn the year before. And I like that Alicia Keys is on here, but I gotta say that this intro makes you think that this thing is more conceptual or deeper than it actually turns out to be, but I like it as an intro. The next track, Pellicoat, was also dropped as a single a day before the release, so I've already heard this. It gives off heavy The Voice vibe, so his album from 2020, I believe, late 2020, um, but it's a little bit more polished than those songs on The Voice, but definitely gives off that vibe, and um, it kind of starts on a reflective note, so we're in for something where we know Durkio is going to talk about what he's been going through. The track after that is the big single All My Life that has been carrying this entire project up to its release with J. Cole. And I gotta say, J. Cole definitely carried that song. We can't, you know, you can't tell me otherwise. It also kind of brings us that mellow, reflective vibe that we're now kind of tuned into when it came to those first three tracks. The next track, Never Again, is not really special. It's again a, the voice vibe that we've kind of gotten with the Pelico thing as well. But I gotta say, it's a little more serious. And here is also the first time of the many times on this album that he references him being a Muslim. So religious matters, which I do like. And it is something he's talked about in an interview with Double XL before the album came out that I went into an analysis of in the videos leading up to this. The next track, Put Him On Ice, brings a little bit more energy. It gives a little more energetic vibe to it. But I got to say, just like No Interviews was on 7220, this reminds me a lot of Lil Baby. Like, he used Lil Baby flows, but I like it. Obviously, the both of them are very closely related in style. But like No Interviews, I kind of see that he's... Not copying, but taking inspiration from Baby. The next track is called Big Dog with Chief Wook, so an OTF artist that we've seen on the uh, OTF tapes. The beat is nasty. Goddamn, this beat is actually really dope. I think it was, now correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was Metro on this production, or ATL Jacob, Let me, correct me if I'm wrong, definitely an amazing beat, um, it's definitely something different, we have his, Durkio's deep voice with those, this, the, that distorted beat, it just sounds really dope, and I like this song, probably one of my favorites on here. Now the next track is Never Imagined with Future, this one is again a little lighter, a little happier, Future delivers a, a very solid feature, um, but it kind of feels like it's a Future song, Durkio does kind of bring it up towards the end of his second verse, where he kind of goes into a little bit more hard mode, but I do like this track. Nothing too special. It could it could have been way better, but it's like not too bad. The next track, Sad Songs, to me was not really it. It's definitely the voice vibes again, like we see that a lot on here. I'm going to go into that at the end of the video as well. He's trying to hit some high notes on this one that I he's not hitting, so that was a, bit, a little bit of a turn off for that song. Now, before Fajir, like the Fajir prayer, being a Muslim, this one was unexpectedly hard. Durkio went into his, like, drill Chicago mode on this one again, and I think that is definitely something that a lot of people, you know, wanted him to do, and I think he came through a lot with that style on this track, unexpectedly so, 
judging from the religious title though. The next track is War About It with 21 Savage and I know this one is produced by Metro. I think this might even be the Metro Boom and Zaytoven collab, um, but this one is menacing. Like those piano keys on there are definitely setting the mood for this one. Obviously a little bit more aggressive again because you kind of imagine when 21 Savage and Dirk get on track, it's gonna be that type of vibe. Now on You Got Him, I think the vocal sample that they use was definitely really hard. It's kind of a basic Dirk track for the rest of the for the rest of the song though, um, and he raps about you know using drugs again. And for, in the second half of the album, he does a lot of drug references, even though that is something he specifically said he wanted to kind of grow out of. So where's the growth there, Dirk? The next track, Grandson with Kodak, I think also. A Metro Boom produced track, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Kodak goes hard on this one. Kodak goes harder than I expected. You know, I expected this to be a basic Kodak feature, but this one was dope. I like the synths on here, and I also like that the beat is that low key hard type of beat where it's not like, oh, this is going crazy, but you're like, while listening to it, you're like, okay, I, I like this one. On 300 years, we have a very low leveled instrumental layer so that the vocals are the main focus of the track. You can like this, you can dislike this. The main you know beat hanging in the background though is pretty menacing i do like the hook even though at first i was like wait is this kind of nah this is not it but at the end i definitely like the hook on this one now same side with rob 49 god damn both of them go in on this one so hard pause resume and dirk kind of proves that he cannot just be that singing dude as on like the voice type of vibes that we're getting a lot on this album but he can actually rap. He can rap his ass off. So I was really impressed with Darky on this one too. Rob obviously carried the first half of the song completely, so don't want to discredit that at all. Now B12 to me had some of the nicest flows on here, some of the nicest flow switch-ups, and I like those pitched up, you know, instrumental layers in the back of the beat. That was definitely a unique point of this track as well. Now at this point we stuck. I believe that this was produced by LT ATL Jacob, and it sounds like a Drake song with like those eerie vocal samples and the synths kind of a short track but i definitely liked it just because it reminded me of a drake song then we got the juice song cross the globe that was originally a juice track it also sounds like a juice track with a with a you know Durkio feature on there definitely did this thing though but it's a juice world track obviously because it was and then Durkio got it so if you listen to this track you listen to it because of juice and not because of dirk now drew hill was something that i didn't really like you know it's kind of a the voice song again i say this a lot but just the style is so similar i thought 7220 was even a little bit different in that regard and the singing on here is kind of awkward at the beginning not gonna lie so not not a huge fan of that now belt to ass though is probably my favorite song on this one it has a nice vocal sample again like i already said a bunch of these have nice vocal samples it has a nice bounce and tempo to it that i really enjoy dirk you can definitely work with that the best and there is this one electric guitar that's hanging in the background that i just find so beautiful so definitely bold to ask one of my favorite ones stand by me with morgan wallen another maybe unexpectedly expected collab and i like the combination of the two i thought before broadway girls it was going to be cringe but that was pretty good i like how they both kind of they have those country instrumentals but then like those you know hip-hop drums over it i like i like the way that they're doing this this one likely also going to go pretty big just because morgan wallen is pretty big right now and it definitely sounds like a morgan wallen song with the Durkio feature on it like broadway girls already was um not sure if they're gonna go as big as broadway girls but i like it you know it's not like it's, it wasn't as uncomfortable and cringe as i thought it could be the last track moment of truth though talking about his children but from sound wise it just sounds like a basic Durkio track nothing too special but definitely you know an adequate closer to the album some general thoughts that i have on this project as i said so many times during this video it sounds like the voice 2.0 even though it does have a nice mix between those singing kind of melodic songs that we know from the voice and those little bit more harder tracks that especially become prevalent in the second half of the album but he could have easily went with the voice 2.0 and it would have been fitting, but he changed the title to Almost Healed, so we're going with this. Something else I wanted to say was that some of the hooks, especially in the first half, do seem repetitive. And that isn't necessarily bad, but at some point you're like, okay, he just kind of went the easy route with this hook. And generally you can say, just as I just said, the second half is harder in terms of the flows and the instrumentals than the first half, which is a little bit more chill, those The Voice songs that I always say.
But in general, the beat selection, this one is pretty good. I mean, you had the list of the producers you recruited on this one. Zaytoven, Metro Boom, and ATL Jacob, Dr. Luke, um, you know, other people in there. I'm forgetting everybody right now, but you can look up the producer's track list. Uh, definitely a lot of high-profile names he got in here. And I, I, I do got to say, on a cute note, I like all the little India references he does in here. So to his, to his I think now, wife, have they married? They're definitely engaged. India... They were like not together and then now they're together again. Anyway, I like all the cute little references he does. So that's it for my review of Almost Teal Lil Durk's new album that came out today. Let me know what you think about this album. Were you kind of expecting this? Were you satisfied with the end product? What were you still hoping for? All of your thoughts and your reviews of this, please let me know in the comments down below. If you watched this video to the end and liked it and you want to stay up to date with all current hip hop events and releases, make sure to subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that like button and go follow my social media and most importantly, join my discord in the description. Until the next one, you'll have an incredible day and you'll take care.